Two Ecamm Live version 3.10 beaters in one day. Aren't we lucky? Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And uh, today there were two new betas released for Ecamm Live version 3.10. Uh, beta 3 being the main release. Uh, and then there was a couple of little bugs that were immediately rectified. Uh, and so there was a second beta pushed out. So if you did get the update notice and you updated to beta 3, uh, then do make sure you go and just check for updates again and uh, get the beta 4. In fact, where are my manners? How do you do that? Well, let me just show you in uh, my Ecamm Live setup. So if I come over to my uh, screen sharing mode, whoops a daisy. Uh, and then if you come up to the Ecamm Live beta menu, uh, and then down here, you'll see check for updates. Uh, and so when you click that, it is going to prompt you uh, to update to the latest version if you are not already. How about if you are using Ecamm Live and are curious, beta curious, <laughs> but have not yet tried it out? Uh, well, the place to go to get it is uh, at ecamm.com slash beta. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's a public beta. Anybody can go and download it and try it out. It runs alongside the uh, regular version of Ecamm Live, so don't worry about uh, having to choose between them. You can just open the beta up, give it a go, uh, and head back to the regular version. Although I've got to say, I use the beta almost full time. <laughs> so uh, I don't uh, sort of switch back and forth. Uh, and I always find that they're generally uh, certainly stable enough for me. But you may just want to bear that in mind that it is beta software. And so there is prone to be uh, the odd bug or two here and there. That is the point of beta software. It's to test it before it goes into the uh, public release. Now, if you uh, are interested to learn more about the beta and you've downloaded it and you want to uh, join a community of people who are also talking about it, uh, then definitely also check out the Facebook group for the Ecamm Live beta as well. Link for that will be in the description as well. And here is where you can uh, share any feedback that you've got specifically about the beta. Uh, and then also when there are new releases and things like that, Ken and Glenn, the uh, lovely developers behind Ecamm Live, uh, they will come on and do a, uh, a sort of live stream explaining about features uh, and things like that as well. So uh, definitely check out those two resources. Uh, so what actually is in the latest beta? Well, there's only a couple of new features really, uh, but they are worth mentioning. So that's why I thought I'd just do a quick video. Um, so namely, they are the uh, ability to have multiple sounds running at one time. So previously, if you were playing uh, music and then you wanted to add a sound effect, the music would stop and then the, uh, the sound effect would play, which is not necessarily what you want. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, but then also the ability to uh, assign hotkeys to overlays in the same way that we have with uh, scenes in the last beta there was an easy way to assign sh keyboard shortcuts to different scenes that by the way is something that I think I neglected to really cover in my uh, last update about the beta uh, 2 release or the beta 1 release whichever it was uh, so I will just touch on that in this video as well. Uh, and then there's a couple of other things related to uh, alignment of text. Uh, and then there was just some general fixes and things like that. And as you can see, beta 3 came out with these new features. Uh, and then uh, beta 4 came out wherever it is there. <laughs> uh, just a couple of hours later, actually, with a couple of uh, fixes um, that they'd noticed actually while they were doing the demo of the update in the beta group. So Let's get straight on into it though, shall we? He says after a few minutes of waffling. <laughs> and let's have a look at how this uh, stuff all works. So uh, I'm gonna come back into my demo mode. I'll just get my screen ready. There we go. Uh, so uh, in uh, Ecamm, basically where you have different um, uh, sound effects, previously the uh, behavior was that if you played some music uh, and that started coming through, um, then when you went to play another track, that one would stop and the other one would just play. But what that meant is if you wanted to play a uh, sound effect, so say you'd got something like this. Uh oh, I didn't do something stupid. And you wanted that to play, then that would have previously stopped the music. Well, actually, maybe what you want is for your music to be playing in the background. So maybe we've got something going on in the background, such as with this, and you want to adjust that, make the sound uh, lower, uh, but then you still want to be able to play uh -oh. your sound effects over the top of the music. Well, now you can do, and you can do that as much as you want. What's quite clever though, is what they've done is they've added in some little bit of coding so that they can basically decipher whether what you've got is really a sound effect. So something that's like a short clip um, versus something that's a long piece of music uh, such as this. So 
the behavior that they've got is because they figure you're not actually going to want to have two pieces of music playing over the top of each other, sort of clashing with one another. Um, so what they've done is if I play a sound effect, uh -oh. it I plays and the music stays in the background. However, if I come to click on one of these others, it does actually end the previous piece of music and start playing the new piece. So I think that that is quite a little clever thing that they've done there. So the next thing that they've added in is the ability to add keyboard shortcuts directly to uh, different actions. Now we have always had keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if I come into the scenes, you can see that we've got keyboard shortcuts that have been predefined for, uh, in the case of the scenes, command one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine, is to flick between the, uh, the scenes that you've got set up, the first nine of them. Uh, but then if you move the scenes around, then those keyboard mappings, keyboard shortcut mappings, uh, previously used to change. So what they added in in the uh, recent beta not this one today was for scenes they added in the ability here uh, to add in keyboard shortcuts and this little sort of symbol here which is the command symbol if I click on that uh, then I can just type in a hotkey that's going to allow me to switch scenes so if you're not using a stream deck or anything like that to switch scenes and you do want to be able to do it by the keyboard uh, then that was something that was added in in the recent beta well what they've done now is they've also applied that same functionality to the overlays as well so if I look in the overlays window over here this is uh, all of my different overlays you can see that now exactly the same we can just add a keyboard shortcut type in the keyboard shortcut uh, and that will allow you to uh, toggle on and off your various different overlays. So the one final thing that I want to just mention is to do with text and that is the alignment tools within text. So if I come and add in a new text overlay here uh, and I'm just going to type something like this. <laughs> if I can even spell a four letter word, uh, I always have trouble typing and uh, speaking at the same time. So let me just come here and just make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it. Um, so uh, basically, if you align the text with the uh, the center of the screen, for example, um, but then we have the uh, we type in some more text like this <laughs> some more text still can't spell uh, you can see that it has uh, extended that out to the right um, and left the uh, the left side where it was and that's because of the justification that we've got set in the text panel itself whereas if i maintain if i uh, sorry if i set that to be uh, centered alignment um, then now if i just put that where we want it again uh, and i was to de de delete some of that then you'll see that it's maintained that center alignment. So basically whatever you al uh, align it to in the uh, the text box, so either right, left or center, um, then it will maintain that alignment sort of on the screen as well. Uh, whereas before it didn't actually used to do that. It would maintain the alignment within the text box itself, um, but the actual position of the text box wouldn't necessarily maintain that position. So that's another great little thing that they've done in terms of uh, keeping everything all aligned. Uh, if you are looking to do some really interesting stuff with uh, text boxes, <laughs> then I can highly recommend that you uh, check out Building Blocks with Anna and Fulgens uh, and also their uh, e uh, Ecamm News Network show that they do in the Ecamm Facebook group as well because uh, they do some really next level stuff with text boxes. And so uh, I'm sure that all of these new uh, little uh, functionality related to text boxes will come in very handy for all of that stuff. There we go. That is just a brief update on those uh, few new features for this beta. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe as always. And there is always my buy me a coffee link if you found that really useful. That's the best way to support the channel on a one off or ongoing basis. So that's all for now. But I will leave a link to some more of my Ecamm Live videos over on the right hand side. So be sure to check those out. Uh, don't go anywhere. They're coming up right now. <laughs>